It's happening. After all the talk, climate ambition is giving way to climate action and the energy crisis affecting millions has made the case for change even stronger. After all, why rely on declining oil and gas and the regimes that control them when you can build clean, homegrown energy? But to be truly sustainable, this can't just be about tonnes of carbon emitted. It needs to be about people too. One where people and communities see and share the benefits. Get it right and we all win. Get it wrong and we risk leaving people behind. So, how do we set ourselves up for success? I started when I was 16. Um, I still see some of the people today that I met on the first day. You spend a lot more time with the people than you do with your own family, so you, you, you naturally progress to making good, long-lasting friendships. We have to uh, power our homes, we have to cook, we have to heat, but we cannot do this at the expense of the environment or our livelihoods. Okay, hi Richard and Lang, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and we're going to have a discussion about our experience on Scotland's Just Transition Commission. And I suppose I'd like to start with you, Richard, if you don't mind, because I think that the trade union movement can claim to be the authors of this concept of a just transition. What is the trade union movement trying to achieve through this notion of a just transition? If you look at substantial industrial change, it never ends well for workers. At various different parts around the world, actually, back into the 60s and 70s, Various unions started to look at what was coming and started to say, we need to plan for change. It uh, came to the UK, there was the Lucas Plan that Transport and General Workers Union worked on, and then back into the States, and then it really broadened out as we sort of started to move towards net zero. We very much see it as ours, we're quite protective of it. We don't mind loaning it to organisations that we know we can work with, but it, at, the, at its heart, it's about protecting workers and their communities. Pretty much everybody was in a union and sought the security from being in a union. We had a really good working relationship and, and at the end, you know, it, I think that, that served as well to work with HR and try and get the best deal for, for the staff before everybody had to move on. From my experience, I come from a pit village, which was decimated by unplanned changes to the coal industry. But that's what we want to avoid for oil workers, for people caught in high carbon industries. We have to reduce our dependence on fossil fuel to a level such that we can bring up the use of renewable energy sources higher than our dependence on fossil fuel. And that's a process, you're not going to be able to jump straight from one to the other these things take time so what do you do in in the interim and how do you move between where do you get the training and support from the environmental movement seems to be as vested in this idea of a just transition as well Lan, can you explain why that's the case certainly wwf our mission is about people and nature thriving together in order to tackle the climate and nature crisis people have to be at the center of that the injustices that come from bad decisions, whether that be uh, communities that are left uh, with the toxic legacy of, of industrial complexes, uh, left with no jobs, left with broken communities, and the pollution. So those injustices lead themselves to, to this idea that people and nature must go hand in hand. And there's a phrase where people talk about, you know, there's no jobs on a dead planet. Well, that's absolutely true. I actually think it's really powerful when environmentalists are speaking up for people and trade unionists are speaking up for the environment because it makes the point that it's completely intertwined. At SSE, the transition is already happening. This is Fiddler's Ferry Power Station in the northwest of England. For decades, it burned coal to generate lots of electricity until it closed in 2020. But while coal may be fading, the people and the skills in places like Fiddler's Ferry are as relevant as ever. This idea of social dialogue, that at the heart of any transition, industrial transition, if it is going to be fair and just, what we have to do is to do that together. What does it mean for, to achieve true social dialogue? We have to be at the table when change is planned and when change is implemented and when change is reviewed. 
In terms of organisational social dialogue, it's sit down, talk to us, listen to us, co-design and co-deliver with us. Don't just tell us this is happening and your job is to mitigate redundancies. Actually involve us in the plan of change. Unions can come to the table and say, look at these skills that you've got, look at the places that you could redeploy those people, look at these areas of business that you could move into. The work in is, is very similar. I'm still a civil structural engineer. I'm still applying engineering principles to solve problems. I went from the full mining of coal, that was my background, into the projects of the future carbon capture, hydrogen, whether it be hydrogen production, hydrogen storage. Fiddler supported a community in a, in a country, deliver its energy needs. The, the knowledge, experience, training people had at Fiddler's Ferry, just within SSE, that has now spread across the business. We've got people from Fiddler's working across most of our assets, and if they're not working across most of our assets in now, then in the past they've supported the assets. So I am directly involved in you know, the transition to net zero as well, which is great, coming from the background of a coal-fired power station. You could maybe accuse some industries of perhaps using the language of a just transition in order to make an excuse or a reason to slow down the decarbonisation challenge. There is greenwashing, there is this stealing of the just transition phraseology, but companies that don't engage with this process will simply fail. The third biggest issue that our members want us as a union to be concentrating on is net zero. The transition away from fossil fuel generation is the right thing into green energy. Again, it's, it's a must for the, for the planet. If you want to attract talented young people into your organisation, if you're greenwashing, they'll go somewhere else. You've got to get on board with this. You've got to engage, because if you try and turn back the tide, you'll end up getting washed away and, and your company will collapse. I'm also interested if you had advice or guidance that you would make to other environmental organisations like WWF on how they should support or engage with, with the just transition. I think there's still a need for environmental groups, including my own, to always make sure that we are stepping up and giving voice to people and communities that don't have a voice in this. Similarly, I think it's also about looking at the policies and things we're advocating for. It's very easy to potentially uh, push for something which has detrimental impacts on people and communities or those who are already disadvantaged. And if anything, we need to flip that on its head and say, what are the opportunities from our policy demands that will remove existing injustices or improve the situation for those who are, are, are find themselves in difficult circumstances? Places like Fiddle has really helped to make sure that we had a stable footing to make sure that we could manage the transition in the right way, deliver on what people needed, whilst working towards where we need to be. You know, I think it sets you up really well to see that, to see how important people are in, in, in the workplace and in industry, to see how important the community network is, to see how important the understanding of how your workplace links with your local community. I think it was also about just engaging with, people, with uh, individuals and groups and organisations who might be considered not friendly, even the enemy in some cases. At the end of the day, we all live on this planet. It's unfortunately heading in the wrong dire direction with, when it comes to the climate and nature. So it's in all our interest to find common ground and consensus on how to work together. There's a prize in, in achieving a just transition to net zero. It's not just about stopping bad things from happening. Actually, we can create something that is better than what went before. This notion of a just transition to net zero carbon emissions is also attracting official attention. In 2019, the Scottish Government established a commission bringing together trade unionists, businesses, environmentalists and others too. Its job was to listen, learn and suggest ways to deliver a fair deal for everyone. We have had this experience, this fantastic privilege of being members of Scotland's Just Transition Commission, but I have a very acute memories from our very first meeting. If there was a fly on the wall at that first evidence gathering session, you would not have believed that consensus would have been achieved by our very last meeting. Why do you think that happened? How was it that we were able to take a group of industrialists, trade unionists, environmentalists, and to get ourselves to a position of consensus at the end of a two-year commission. When you take a group of people who are very passionate about a number of things, they're passionate about what they believe in, they're passionate about what they do, they've got a lot of views on just transition. I think there's always going to be a tension. We can't jump to the greenest way of doing everything because we're not ready yet, the, the infrastructure isn't in place. But I think that we very quickly stopped seeing each other as 
Rachel from SSE or Richard from you know the unions or Lang from WWF and start seeing people as people. 60 to 70 percent of what we all believed there was a commonality and it was the, the difficult bits were going to be how we, we dealt with the, the 30 percent. There were people who were prepared not to compromise on their ideals but to compromise in terms of moving forward so that we got something that could be delivered. We know it's an old industry, we know it's got environmental issues, but actually it's supporting our communities, it's supporting our investment, it's supporting our ability to do the transition we'd want to do. You know, we just developed and we're just commissioning, you know, the most efficient gas-fired power station in Europe. You know, that's far cleaner than a coal-fired power station. And I could have sat there and said, well, no, we'll just have to overthrow and have the revolution and have workers control the factories and that's a just transition. But I don't think we'd have got very far, to be honest. We understood that um, net zero is where we needed to get. So there was no disagreement about that amongst groups. So, you know, that, that helped. I think what really nailed it for me, the first person examples that were given and stories that people told of what it's like when the transition doesn't go well and how they were looking to just transition to help them just as much as help the planet. I think that helped because people went, we're not just trying to do, you know, achieve this net zero, we're tr we are genuinely now, now that we've heard these stories and understand the, the situations, do something that's better for people that will be better than what we've currently got. We've still got plants that we need to run and as a business, we're still trying to make sure that we deliver on today's energy needs in a manner that's sustainable and right for society. Nobody on the Commission thought that where we were now was perfect. But Just Transition has got to be, as you said, not just about net zero and the future. It's got to be about resolving some of those issues that are legacies of previous industrial change. Very Bridge was really male dominated. The, there was only one women's toilet in the, the whole of Ferry Bridge, which we all had to, to use. There was three of us um, that used it. That was fun because it was such a big site, you could be miles away from it, so you had to plan your day around it. In my career, it's been clear to me that I have known about impacts that were coming down the track for communities before they themselves knew. It should not be the case that an environmental organisation knows more about what's happening, about to happen to a community than the community themselves. That's wrong and needs to be changed. When you start to learn about what the challenges that are being faced in other parts of the world, some of those challenges are exceptionally daunting. And if you were able to give one piece of advice to a community, to to trade union colleagues internationally or a region or a city region or whatever in terms of their own journey of achieving a just transition to net zero, what would that one piece of advice be? The key thing is there's, you've got to give it a go. That means bringing together as many of the different stakeholders as you can and, and specifically looking out for those stakeholders who don't have voice or are often missing. The other thing is of course recognise that the situation isn't necessarily the same in any one place. It's very local to specific regions, cities, countries. Finally, I would say, it's the unintended consequences. It may be entirely possible to deliver a just transition in a certain place at a certain time, but you could also do that by causing unfairness in other parts of the, your country, region or world, and you must not miss that. There's, there's little point in solving the small places if you're still doing over other people in other places elsewhere in the world. But to me, we need to transition from a high carbon energy source for the world to a to a low renewable one and that needs to be for the whole world and it needs to be fair for all of us from me in the global rich uh, to, to absolutely everybody who needs power across the whole world so it's a, it's a transition but we can't expect all the countries who are still developing their energy sources to not transition and to not get all the technology that we've developed here and we have the money for here to transition at the same time. You shouldn't become insular and inward looking if you try and do it on your own, you will fail. You have to reach out to all the help and all of the advice and all of the people that are in the same boat and work at it together. If you're a community, reach out and speak to the businesses, reach out and speak to environmental movements, reach out and speak to your trade union council or, or your local trade union. If you're a government, make sure that you're engaging all of the stakeholders because any one actor on its own will not deliver a just transition. There's loads of people that will help. There are thousands of us that are passionate about this. So don't do it on your own, and you're not on your own.